Hello dear friends, this is Yule Humphreys. I'm glad again to share with you a word from the Bible and a short message that I, I think is so important for us and that is that we have been uh, uh, crucified with Christ and we live in Christ. This is a, a message that the world needs to hear. Christianity, how can we live as Christians? How can we overcome sin? How can we forgive people that hurt us? How can we please God? <clears throat> It all begins at the cross of Jesus Christ. The cross of Jesus is the answer. And I want you to know that it's important. In Galatians, the second chapter, in verse 20, Paul says this, <clears throat> and, uh, and <clears throat> I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who has loved me, and has given himself for me. And so we see in this one wonderful scripture that we are crucified with Christ. I'm talking to you that are Christians. If you have accepted Christ as your Lord and your Savior, you believe in him from your heart, and you follow him, perhaps you've been baptized and a member of the church, as you should be, but I'm telling you right now that if you really believe in Jesus and follow him and obey his word, then you're saved forever. But here's what's happened to you. You were crucified with him when he went to that cross. You see, everything Jesus did on this earth, he represented you and me that believe in him. He represents his believers, his followers. He became one with them and they became one in him. So everything that happened to Jesus happens to you because you are in Christ. If I put a card in this Bible and I close the Bible and I put it in a box and I tape it up and I mail it to England, the Bible goes to England. But there's also the little card in there that will go to England. Or wherever this Bible goes, that little card will go. And so we're like the card. We're in Christ. And wherever He is, we are. Whatever He's done, we've done through Him. Because we are in Him. The Bible says, and He's in us. And so we see that in this scripture, we were crucified with Christ. That means that old evil nature that's in us was crucified when you believed in Jesus Christ. And you don't feel the same way anymore after you've accepted Christ. You don't love sin anymore. The Bible says that we're crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, we live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And so we see the importance of Christ living in us. And this is the secret. This is the way we overcome. The secret is Christ in you, the hope of glory. And this is the way we live, because we are in Him, and He is in us. I live nevertheless, not I, but Christ lives in me. If I can get that truth down in my heart, hallelujah. And if I can find that Jesus Christ in my walk every day and every way, then praise God. If I know in my heart that Christ lives in me, then there's nothing out there that's going to make me afraid. There's nothing out there that's going to dismantle me and destruct me and destroy me. There's nothing out there that's going to so disfigure me and all oh, bring me to such depression that I will cannot go through it. No, no. Christ lives in me and nothing's too hard for him. So we see in this beautiful scripture that Jesus Christ lives in his people. He lives in us and praise God that's the reason we can live. The Lord showed me a truth, a simple truth but profound. <clears throat> in fact most of the truths of God that he teaches and reveals to us are very simple truths but they're also profound. And this one is this that we need as Christians to seek and to please and to think of God more than we do of others. We need to think of God more than we do of others. And we need to think of others more than we do of ourselves. That's a good thought that out of the Word of God it teaches us <clears throat> that we are to put others before us. The Bible says the greatest command is to love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind and strength. And the second one is to love your neighbor or love other people even as yourself. So you see, the Bible says we ought to care for others even more than we care for ourselves. And so Jesus did that when he went to that cross for you and for me. And so we need to think of God 
more than we think of others. Think of God often. Put Him in first place, even before other people. But then secondly, we need to think of others more than we do of ourselves. We need to think about the need in others' lives more <clears throat> than we do our own needs. And to do this, to do this, we need Christ in us, the hope of glory. There is no way that we can live like that in our own normal strength. <clears throat> this is not according to the strength of the flesh. It's according to the power of God who lives in us that we can do it. And so we're crucified with Christ. Not only are we crucified with Christ, but we find over in the book of uh, Romans, <clears throat> another good scripture in uh, Romans 6 and uh, verse 6, Know this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, and henceforth we should not serve sin. You see, until a person is saved and born again, he is a servant of sin. He's a servant of sin. He bows down to the mighty idol of sin. I don't care if he's a president of the biggest company in the world, or if he's president of the United States, or if he's a king in England, wherever, whatever his position. If he's not a Christian, saved and born again, then he is a servant of sin because that's why and where and the way we were born into this world. We were born sinners, and we serve sin because we can't help it. We can't help it. The Bible says in the 8th chapter of Romans that the natural man, not saved, not born again, the natural man uh, cannot know the things of God. He cannot know them. He does not know them. And he looks upon them as foolishness because they are spiritually discerned. They have to have the Spirit of God to reveal to us the things of God. And if you're a Christian, it's because the Holy Spirit has revealed to your heart the things of Christ and the mercies of God. Amen. Thank God for that. And may the Lord bless you, my dear friend. I know that the cross is our victory. The cross is our banner. The cross is our glory. The cross is the way home. The cross is the way home. They tell me in London, England, that in the very center of London there's a place they call the Charing Cross. Charing Cross. And all distances are measured from the Charing Cross. And uh, the story goes that there was a little boy that got lost in London. And he was wandering around in the streets and crying and a policeman stopped him and said, Son, where do you live? And he said, I don't know where I am. And he said, Well, I uh, talked to him a while, I kept asking him questions, and finally the little boy said between his tears, he said, if you just take me to the cross, and I can find my way home from there, if you take me to the cross. He was talking about Charing Cross there in the middle of London. And that's the truth. It's the truth that we all need to see. If we just go to the cross of Christ, we'll find our way home. We'll find our way to heaven, but it'll only be by the way of the cross. Oh, my dear friends, we know this, that our old man, that old person, that old sinful nature, that old person that desired sin was a servant of sin, that old nature, oh, is crucified with Christ, dead with Christ, that the body of sin be destroyed and that henceforth we would not serve sin. We will not bow down to it. We will still make mistakes and you will still do the wrong thing, but not because you delight in it and want to do it. You will do it because you are caught in a trap and you miss it, but you don't like it. And you will say, God, forgive me. Amen. And God will lead you. And God will carry you home. And He carries you home through the cross. Through the cross. Oh, praise God. Near the cross. Near the cross. There a precious fountain Free to all, a healing stream flows from Calvary's mountain. Believe in the cross and the one who died for you. Pray this brief prayer with me in closing. Pray this brief prayer with me and be saved and forgiven forever. Believe that Jesus died for you, rose again, and is coming back. And he wants you to be his follower. Pray a prayer like this. Just pray it wherever you are and pray it out loud if you would and mean it. Say, Dear God, I believe in Jesus. I believe He died for me. I believe He paid for all my sins. I believe He rose again. And I'm asking you to have mercy and forgive me. I repent of my sins. 
I accept Christ as my Lord and my Savior. I believe He loves me. I believe He died for me. I believe He rose from the grave. And I believe He's coming back. Come in my heart. And He'll be lived for you as the Lord of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, my dear friend. And may you live forever under the precious and blessed cross of Christ. Amen.